So what do you look for when you're choosing a microphone and how do you choose the microphone that's going to be best for you? Well, there's a couple of things to keep in mind here. Number one is, what are you recording? So like most things, the answer is a big fat, it depends. If someone says to me, what's the best microphone under $100? I'll say, what are you recording? Because that's a super important question to ask, because if you don't know what you're recording, you don't know what microphone to use. But let's go through the basics here. We're going to go through the types of microphones, what to look for in a microphone, and then my personal recommendations. So let's hold up two fairly typical microphones that you might find in a studio or home studio on this side. In this corner, we have the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is a condenser microphone. It's a side address, large diaphragm condenser. We'll tell you what that means in just a moment. On this side, we have the Shure SM57. You can see, you can't feel it, but it's weighty, weighty. Uh, so the Shure SM57, this is a dynamic microphone, and that is different, which we'll talk about in a moment. There's other types, so we've got the AKG D5. This is my go-to vocal mic if I'm doing live, performances and I'll probably use this in my show this afternoon I'm doing a happy hour show and then uh, if you're looking for a cheaper condenser microphone actually it's about the same price these days the Samson CO1 so you can see the difference there so what is the difference well your condenser microphone uses something called phantom power you might see this on your mixer or your interface it's say 48 V 48 volts of phantom power and it uses that power to power it up. There's a capsule in there. Uh, it's why it's called a large diaphragm condenser. There's a large capsule in there. They're usually side address, except this one. This is a, this is a top address uh, condenser microphone, but they're usually side address. And if you're plugging them in, you need to make sure that you have something that you can plug into that has that power. Now, good news is almost every audio interface and mixer on the market these days does have 48 volts of phantom power. So you'll usually be able to find a way to plug it in. But if you're trying to plug into an amplifier or into an old mixing desk or something that doesn't have phantom power, then you can only use a dynamic microphone. So why would you choose one over the other? The condenser microphone picks up a lot of sound. So this will pick up some detailed sound, really clear, really crisp. Now that is good, but the drawback of that, it's good to get capture that sound. So if you're playing some nice acoustic guitar or if you've got a female vocal that's a little bit quieter, not even necessarily female, but a quieter vocal, the, the condenser microphone is going to do a good job because it's very sensitive. It's going to pick up a lot of stuff. Because of that sensitivity, it can also be a little bit prone to noise. So it is going to pick up some of the noise in your environment. So keep that in mind with your condenser. The beauty of a dynamic microphone is it has much better noise rejection. So because you just sing right into the top here, it's not picking up a lot of sound. It doesn't give you as, as much of that crisp and clear quality of sound but it means it's better. If you're doing like a loud guitar amp cab or a loud vocalist like me, then often using a dynamic microphone can actually help you out. Now, this one is for singing and your SM57. The capsule in there is ex almost exactly the same as one that you can use for vocals. It just doesn't have the ball on top, which is part of the filter. So you can still sing into this one. You just want to be behind a pop filter if you're going to use this one for singing. Which one should you buy for your home studio really depends. It really comes down to how noisy is the space you're recording in. If you've got a lot of background noise, if you've got a lot of things going on that you're competing with, road sounds, children, any of that sort of gear, a dynamic microphone might actually be a, a better bet. Now, these are not as popular as the condensers these days, but they're still a good buy. And all of these sit around that $100 mark. If you, however, have got a nice quiet space and you're doing some delicate finger style acoustic guitars, or you need to pick up on some very uh, intricate kind of sounds that a condenser microphone might be it. If I had $200, I'd go out and buy one of these and one of these. I'd get a AKG D5 and an Audio-Technica AT2020. Now, what about other cheaper alternatives? You see these ones on eBay and Amazon that are much cheaper. I would steer clear. So if you can, uh, you, can get, you can pick up microphones that kind of look a bit like this, but they're about $30. This is about a $100 microphone. If you do pick one of those up, they'll do the job, but I, I, I'll equate it to wine again. I said this about audio interfaces, but it's kind of like wine. The difference between a $30 and a $100 microphone like this is substantial. Going from a $100 to a two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 microphone, not as substantial. So my recommendation is to sit around that sort of $70 to $100 dollar mark anything from AKG, Audio Technica, Samson, Shaw, any of the brand names 
are going to be a better buy. You know you're going to get good build quality and you know you're going to get a good quality audio recording into your stuff. And if, speaking of stuff, if you are in the market for a microphone, head on over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. That is my gear guide where I have all of the microphones I recommend as well as all the other gear for the home or mobile studio that you can check out. So there you go. That was a bit of an introductory to microphones. There's other videos here on the channel where I go into more detail, but if you're ever wondering what's the difference between a condenser and a dynamic, what, is, what should I choose for my home studio? Hopefully that gives you some ideas. Tom, Tom Rochelle says, uh, for vocals, uh, hard to beat the large diaphragm condenser, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think so. If you've just got a, if you again, if you're only going to have one microphone and you're doing a variety of things, vocals, guitars, uh, percussion, whatever you want to do, yeah, a large, there's a reason why these are so popular. I would grab an AT2020 and you can just vary the distance that you sing from it or that you do your audio from. And it is a good investment for sure. So the, the, the SM57 has another one called the SM58 that just has, picture this, but with the ball bit on top, but a, a bulbous ball. Question, don't do the singing thing. So best for an acoustic guitar, I'm upgrading slowly. So Andy, I've, I've tried both. So I've tried both the SM57. A lot of folks will just use an SM57 to mic up their acoustic. Uh, I tend to go for a large diaphragm condenser. And I'll tell you the reason. I don't seem to be able to get enough volume signal in for my guitar recordings, especially if I'm doing just sort of bring, like you say I'm playing acoustic and I'm just doing like really subtle things, like just a single chord strum or something at the start of each uh, of each part, or I want to play some finger style or some picking style. Yeah, I, I tend to not be able to get enough volume, enough uh, level going in. That's probably another thing to consider with your dynamic mics is that often you'll get a quieter signal, which is good in some respects if you've got louder vocals or a louder signal coming in. But if you've got those quieter, subtler parts, a condenser is good. You can always also turn the input gain down on either of these. So the condenser isn't always going to be full on full bore, but it does give you that crispier sound. So it really depends on whether you want a more of that detailed, crispy top end kind of sound, or whether you want a little bit more of that uh, toneful sort of rounded kind of sound that you get with a dynamic mic. But if you are if you look in the market to get another mic, I would, the AT2020 is kind of my go-to and what I recommend most people look at. Let, let's touch on USB mics, because I was just covering, your, your, these are your XLR microphones. So I'm assuming you're plugging into a, a mixer or a an audio interface, but let's just say you're not. If you're not plugging into a mixer or an audio interface, you can get a USB microphone. Uh, and the thing is that USB microphones are good to start out with, but they're not upgradable. So if you get something like the Blue Yeti, the AKG Lyra, uh, what are some other popular ones? Uh, the, you can get a, a USB version of this one, of the AT2020 USB, uh, so then that's fine to start out with. But then when you want to upgrade to a different microphone, you're stuck and you can only use one microphone at a time. So if you're just doing podcasting or spoken word or just vocals and you know that you're never going to want to change or upgrade, sure, go out and grab a USB microphone. If you want to upgrade and have that ability to upgrade in the future and you want to use an audio interface or a mixer, XLR microphones, ones that plug in via an XLR cable, are definitely the ones you want to go for. Uh, Tim Thompson said, the Samson Meteor USB is what brought me to this channel looking for reviews. Great little mic. Yeah, and look, when I talked before about USB microphones, again, there's, there's nothing wrong with a USB microphone. I just, I, I warn people up front that if you are going to choose a USB mic, when you go to upgrade, you kind of leave that mic behind and you have to get a new setup. So, because people come to me and they're like, what, what should I buy? I say, yeah, the Samson Meteor. It's a great little USB mic. It's about 60 bucks and you're done you're set up but the problem there is if you then want to update and get an audio technica at 2020 you've either got to buy the usb version and get rid of the samson meteor or you've got to set yourself up with a with a audio interface and a mixer but again if that's what you want to do i, I probably was a bit too strong on that before so let me just reiterate that that USB microphones are actually great. Like the quality of the mic and the, even the quality of the interface going in is really good. And you don't need to anything else to set up. It's plug and play and you're off to the races. And the quality, like I said, the quality of them is quite good. But yeah, didn't talk about separate, separate preamps or analog compressors. Uh, that's a progression, bing, bang, and you're done. Yeah, if you want to... Uh, if you want to go next level, you can also go with a separate preamp for your microphone. So what I said before about some of your, your audio interfaces not having enough signal, enough level coming through for your dynamic mics, you may want to get a separate 
preamp and outboard bit of gear and even an outboard compressor. Maybe that's a topic for another day. Maybe we'll jump into that. Is it a good idea to play acoustic electric guitars without an amp and record the tone itself with a microphone? A really good question. Uh, yes. So in my experience and in my opinion, uh, using a microphone to mic up your acoustic guitar, even if it is an acoustic electric, will give you a better quality tone. The actual uh, pickups that you get on um, acoustic guitars, especially cheaper acoustic guitars, kind of sound bad in my opinion. So you tend to get a bit of a harsher tone and that extra twangy tone. So especially if you want to get like a nice full body tone from your guitar, from the resonance coming from the actual guitar body, then yeah, you'd want to get a microphone. That's where I just set up my AT2020, pointed at about your 12th fret from around about a meter away or maybe anywhere from half a meter to a meter. So that's one or two feet, I guess, for uh, other folks. Then uh, you're going to get the best quality tone. That's what I tend to do. I must admit though, my Taylor acoustic, since I've had the Taylor, that has a really nice pickup. And I've legitimately just recorded direct in, just plugged in a guitar cable and plugged directly in to the DI, so to the, the uh, standard instrument jack input of my mixer or of my um, audio interface. And it's been beautiful. So, uh, and I've, I've used that in actual songs and recordings. So experiment with it. It is definitely easier because you're going to get a more consistent tone if you plug directly in. But if you want the best quality tone in my experience, then uh, yeah, that is something that you will uh, need to explore.